Welcome or welcome back uh, to Cisco. In this lesson, we're going to talk about symmetries. And um, yeah, I said here there are different types of symmetry. And the first one I'm going to talk about is what we call reflectional symmetry or line symmetry, because you can use a reflection to map the figures onto itself. Like in this case, you notice here, this is the reflectional symmetry or line symmetry, because I can draw this line. And if I reflect this, a top part of the figure over this line, I'm going to get the bottom one and vice versa. Very similar here. This is the line of symmetry. If I reflect these sides over that line or this side over the other line, we go on to itself. And obviously here, this is the line of symmetry goes in the middle of these two sides of this quadrilateral of this trapezoid. Um, so this is about reflection uh, symmetry. Now we look into this picture, which is, let's say, first is a regular polygon. We should say that. Other than that, it's not good. Uh, does it have a line of symmetry? And the answer is yes, it's right here. Is that the only one? The answer is no. I can have another one. Can I have another one? The answer is yes. And you notice all these three lines goes through the same point. You may want to construct them very accurate to see uh, this property. And by the way, we have more line of symmetry in this case. We have this one that goes through this point F and point C, opposite vertices, to point D and point A. And also all of them goes through this point. And the last one will be from point E going through this point, which is the center of the polygon and B. Okay, so these are the line of symmetry. You can see them better here. You notice we this is an hexagon, six sides, and it has six line of symmetry. Let's take a look to this picture. And let's say first, these two sides are not congruent. They are not the same. So this one, no, does not have any line of symmetry. On the other hand, this one, yes. If this will be a right angle, or in, not necessarily a right angle, but an isosceles triangle of the sides, those sides will be congruent, then will be a line of symmetry. But I don't think HI and GH are congruent. They are not the same. And uh, this example here, we are very similar. We need to determine whether each figure has a line of symmetry. So in this case, we have this vertical line here that cuts this rectangle in half. And obviously, we have another one, this one. So we have two lines of symmetry. Okay. On the other hand, on this one, we don't. So this one, yes, and you see it. And here we do not have any line of symmetry. Sometimes you may uh, have figure on the coordinate grid, on the rectangular grid, then you want to draw the line of symmetry. So in this case, it's even easier to notice this side is four. Right here is the midpoint of this side, the midpoint of the other side, through these two points get goes this line of symmetry. And they want us to write the equation of the line. Then if you notice, it goes to this point 3. That will be x equals 3. Uh, very similar, we can find another line of reflection. This one goes through the middle of these two opposite sides. This is This is the middle. You can count and find the middle three here, three here. And the equation will be x equals 4. You notice this red line goes through that point uh, 0 and 4. So the equation is, I'm sorry, y equals 4. Okay. This one very similar. The only difference, uh, the equation are not going to be integers. So let's start with the first one. I'll say let's start. This is the first line of symmetry. Yeah. If you notice, this point here is uh, has a y coordinate of one. This point here has a y coordinate of negative two. So you can do an, a midpoint, an average between these two values. This is going to be y equals negative 1 over 2 or 0.5. Very similar, we have another line of symmetry that is going to be through these two points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So in the middle is going to be 3 and a half, 1, 2, 3, 3 and a half, 3 and a half here, 
this is the line of symmetry okay you notice it goes to this point it's in the middle between two and three that will be x equals 5 over 2 or 2.5 um, easy rule to remember in case you need it is this one if a regular polygon has an odd number of side the line of symmetry goes through a vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side so you notice here odd number of side 3 5 7 and so on so for instance you see this one he has five sides he has five line of symmetries and all of them goes through a vertex and a midpoint and there are five of them very similar we can see this one this one has seven sides and heptagon the same idea we have seven line of symmetry all of those line goes through a vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side on the other hand if you have an even number of sides four six eight and so on um, we have two types of line of symmetry and you can see them better here one go one type of line goes through the opposite vertices like this one here let me change the color for example this point and this point you notice we have one of symmetry we have more like this this point and this point and this is one type of line of symmetry the second type is the one that goes through the midpoints of the opposite sides and i think we had a similar one a simple example before notice okay and this one is a hexagon and we have six line of symmetry three of one type and three of the other type but altogether six you can see the same um, here this one is an octagon we have eight line of symmetry four of them uh, one type uh, they go through two opposite vertices four of them the other type they go through the midpoints of the two opposite sides also uh, now we're going to move to another type of symmetry rotational symmetry and you see this picture both shapes are regular polygon and if you remember when we drew those line of symmetry we have that point in right here somewhere here and here, somewhere here right that is also called the center of the polygon and in this case the center of symmetry why because we can rotate this uh, regular polygon clockwise or counterclockwise that's cool. so um, and uh, get on top of itself uh, the question is um, how many times and we're going to see on the next example the same story here this uh, regular polygon you can rotate it and this is counterclockwise let's be sure or clockwise and you're going to be on top of the uh, this polygon you can rotate around that center of symmetry so both shapes here have what we call rotational symmetry or radial symmetry um, now that's the thing you may want to also remember the order of symmetry you may present the number of times that the figure can map onto itself when you rotate it from 0 to 360 and the magnitude of symmetry or angle of rotation is the smallest angles uh, that you can rotate so the figure maps onto itself so let's see this uh, problem here this example here do we have rotational symmetry this is on let's say a regular polygon of three sides a equilateral triangle and we can find it i'm going to go through the vertex c and the middle the midpoint of a b the same thing here i'm going to go i'm going to start from point a and i'm going to go through the middle and the third one by the way goes through that same point and the vertex b later when you do the triangle you're going to find a name for this point here but in this moment I'm, another name i'm going to call it the center of symmetry and if we rotate counterclockwise or clockwise we uh, are going to map abc onto itself so we do have rotational symmetry on part a if the figure has rotational symmetry state the order and the magnitude of symmetry so uh, if you remember or if you don't it's right here the order of symmetry represents the number of times that the figure map onto itself so let's take this point a 
and if I rotate it one time this way, I can be here on B, so this is one time. The second time here, I'm going to be on C, and then I'm going to go three, third time and I'm going to be back on A here. So very simple. Yes, the figure has rotational estimate and the order is 3. So you notice the order is equals of the number of sides you have for this regular polygon tree. And now we need to find the uh, magnitude of symmetry, the smallest angles possible that you can rotate to map and to itself. So even when you rotate like this, you have 360 degrees. And you notice we rotate three times, 360 degrees divide by 3, we rotate 3 times to, to go back on the same position, that will be 120. This is the magnitude of symmetry or the angle of rotation. So if you rotate 120 degrees first time, A becomes B, then one more time A becomes C, and one more time you go back on A. Part B, what rotation clockwise or counterclockwise will carry the point A on to point C? So I kind of already answered to that question. I said if I want to go from A to C and I'm going to go this way, which is uh, counterclockwise, I'm going to need 240 degrees because I need to rotate it twice. And if I want to go clockwise this way, is just 120 degrees. E easy way is do 360 minus 240. And that will be 120 degrees. That is another way to see this. Uh, but again, it's the other uh, way. Not only polygon have rotational symmetry, I said here on top, we can see here we have these two polygons. And the first one, this rectangle does have rotational symmetry, is right here, the center. You can draw the diagonals and find that. Um, so yes, I'm going to say this, yes, it does. Uh, state the order and the magnitude of symmetry. So if I rotate this um, rectangle, point A is going to become point C. If I rotate this way and I go 180 degrees and then if I rotate one more time so I'm gonna go back here and the A is gonna be here I'm gonna rotate one more time 180 degrees point A will be back so the, the order is 2 and the magnitude is 360 divided by 2, that's an easy way to do it, and is 180 degrees. So well, if you rotate 180 degrees, this rectangle ABCD is going to map onto itself. On the other hand, this second one does not have no rotational symmetry, so no reason to look for the order and magnitude. The last type of symmetry is what we call translational symmetry and that happens when a figure or a pattern can be translated and you see here we have these uh, red triangles we can translate it this way and get in this position tra keep translating get the other position and so on right we can see that for the second row also of course the, the same way for for the green triangle and by the way you can follow the same direction or the opposite direction this doesn't matter but the idea here is if you translate these shapes you go on top of themselves so this shape here has translation and symmetry okay on the other hand the second one does not have i cannot translate anything here i cannot translate it to go on top of this one there is no way Okay, so this one does not have uh, translational symmetry, this shape itself. However, if you take a look to this example, the pattern itself, the whole pattern, this, this whole thing, uh, you can translate it 
you notice you can translate it like this and go here and you can translate it like here and go here and yeah the, the, the pattern itself has in this case translational symmetry and you can see the vectors that brings me to the last part of the lesson tessellation or tiling where you have repeating pattern you can have one or more figure the idea is uh, tessellation or tiling there should be no overlapping or empty states uh, empty spaces i'm sorry so you notice here this is a tessellation the figure repeat that uh, quadrilateral okay and i have another one here and you notice again the figure repeat itself and there are no empty spaces and there are no overlapping I said here, uh, the sum of the measure of the angles around the vertex of the solution is 360. Let's take a look a little bit to this. If you notice here, if we get a vertex like this one, if I add this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle, I get 360. Very similar here, any point like this one, if we go around, we get 360. And in fact, here, uh, we can do the math, each angle here is 120 degree. Um, regular tessellation contains only one type of re regular polygon, and that is, uh, those are the polygons, the, the regular polygon for which the interior angle is a factor of 360. And there are only three of them. There are only three regular polygons polygon that tessellate because there are only three regular polygons for which the interior angle is a factor of 360. And obviously this one is one of them, the triangle, the uh, regular polygon of three sides, the equilateral triangle, is the one that tessellate. The square, four sides, because the interior angle is 90, for this one it's 60, let's say that. So that's the reason it tessellates. For this one is 90. That's the reason it tessellates. And this one more, the hexagon, the angle is 120. All these angles are factor of 360. There is no other regular polygon that tessellates by, just by itself by one rectangle, one regular polygon. However, uh, there are tessellation that contains two or more convex polygons regular polygon for example and you can see some example here so you notice here this is an octagon and a square they can tessellate like that and i have one more here and you notice uh, here we have three regular polygons that tessellate the uh, this one that has um, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve the decagon 12 sides a square and one two three four five six and a hexagon so you notice a nice tessellation here if you enjoy this uh, lesson don't forget to click the like button and come back on c square for more help thank you